The massive scale of Europe's latest megatunnel will shock you. A once-in-a-generation construction project is set to transform travel between Central Europe and Scandinavia. When completed in 2029, the $8 billion Famarn Belt Tunnel will be both the longest combined road and rail tunnel and the longest immersed tunnel anywhere in the world. But there's more. The project, officially known as the Famarn Belt Fixed Link, the 11-mile-long tunnel linking Germany and Denmark, will sit in a trench at the bottom of the Baltic Sea at a depth of up to 130 feet. It's a key component in the development of the ScanMed Corridor, a transportation network that spans more than 3,000 miles from Malta in the south to Finland in the north. Along the way, it tunnels through alpine mountains and crosses oceans. But approaching Scandinavia, a stretch of water known as the Famarn Strait causes a 300-mile detour for both road and rail traffic on the north-south route. The project is part of the European 10T network, which aims to streamline infrastructure and reduce the environmental impact of Europe's transport network. The construction of the project was ratified by Denmark's parliament in 2009 and Germany's in 2010. Femern, a subsidiary of the Danish government-owned company Sund & Bailt, was appointed by the Ministry of Transport to undertake the planning, construction, and operation of the tunnel. The construction. The Famarn Belt project will include the construction of an undersea immersed tunnel comprising a four-lane motorway and a twin-track railway. The train journey time from coast to coast will be seven minutes, while the same journey will take 10 minutes by road. The project will reduce the train journey time between Hamburg and Copenhagen from four and a half hours to three hours. The tunnel will comprise two tubes for the motorway, two for the railway line, and one service passage. It will include 89 tunnel elements, each measuring 217 meters in length and 73,000 tons in weight, including 79 standard elements and 10 special elements. Each tunnel element will include a basement area to house technical equipment. The tunnel elements will be placed on a 12-meter deep tunnel trench drenched on the seabed. Each tunnel element will be joined together, and technical installations within the tunnel will be initiated once joined. The tunnel will be covered with gravel, sand, and stone once all the elements are placed. Safety features of the tunnel include a full emergency lane in both directions, in addition to emergency exits provided along the entire length. Road and rail traffic is separated into two separate tunnel tubes, and the design ensures against derailment. The tunnel will also be able to withstand a fire for three hours at a temperature of at least 1,350 degrees Celsius. But that's not all. A local control center, LCC, will monitor the tunnel operations while the train traffic will be monitored by a train traffic control center, TCC, from both sides. Natural ventilation in the tunnel is provided by the movement of vehicles and their piston effect, while mechanical ventilation is provided through large fans installed on the roof. The fans are activated only when traffic is slow or stopped due to an accident. The project also includes the electrification of the existing railway line to enable electric trains to operate on the route instead of diesel trains. The track between Ringstead and Rodby will also be updated to enable freight trains to operate on the route. The existing motorways will also be upgraded to connect with the new tunnel. But the construction of the immersed tunnel involves out-of-this-world skills, thus the huge cost of the project. Construction of the Famarn Belt Tunnel includes the development of three construction sites at Rodby Haven, Putt Garden, and the Blue Water construction site between Denmark and Germany. Utility connections were established and new channels and access roads were also built at the sites. New breakwaters were also constructed near Rodby Haven, extending the coastline by 500 meters. Construction of the breakwaters required more than 2 million tons of granite. Yes, you heard that right. Fabrication works for the tunnel elements began at Rodby Haven in 2020 and in Putt Garden in 2021, while dredging of the tunnel trench began in 2021. The tunnel elements are being fabricated at the work harbors developed in Rodby Haven and Putt Garden. Each of the tunnel elements is being cast separately, with the whole process taking about nine weeks, as a high degree of uniformity and quality in the casting need to be ensured. The tunnel trench is being dredged from the Blue Water site by a fleet of special dredging vessels that will dredge 19 million cubic meters of sand, stone, and soil. The dredged material will be deposited near Rodby Haven, where it will be used to create new beaches and recreational areas. The tunnel elements will be fitted with waterproof bulkheads at both ends and towed in the tunnel trench by tugs, immersed and coupled together. Work on the tunnel's technical and mechanical installations will begin in mid-2029 
and each of these systems will be thoroughly tested in the final part of the construction phase. A tunnel portal is built in both Denmark near Rodbyhaven and Germany near Puttgarten to connect the tunnel's railway and motorway with the upgraded and newly built roads and railways. Railway Upgrades The 115-kilometer-long Ringstead-Holby section of the ringstead Fermern railway line will be upgraded and electrified as part of the project. The upgrade will enable trains to operate at speeds of 200 km per hour from the existing 120 to 160 km per hour by straightening out curves. A new alignment will be built towards the north and south of Gloomso, as well as the south of Vordenborg and south of Eskelstrup. A 55 km double track section from Vordenborg to Holby will also be replaced. Furthermore, several stations and platforms on the line will be rebuilt and upgraded to develop new access roads, lifts, and road infrastructure. A new railway bridge will be built over Goldborg Sund, in addition to a new double track bridge over Masnid Sund. The construction works on the railway started in 2014, with electrification works expected to be completed in 2024. Funding and Contractors The project is being completely funded by Denmark, following an intergovernmental agreement signed between Denmark and Germany. European Investment Bank EIB, provided a 123.5 million euros, about 145.4 million dollars, grant from the Connecting Europe facility CEF for the project construction. The EIB also approved a 200 billion euros, about 223.1 million dollar loan to Femurn Landleg, a construction company and subsidiary of Sund and Bailt, in May 2019 to upgrade the railway network on the Danish side to enable connection with the new tunnel. As for the contractors, the tunnel is being built by two consortiums called Femurn Belt Contractors, FBC, and Femarn Link Contractors, FLC. The FBC consortium includes dredging and marine contractors Boscalis and Van Oord, with architecture and engineering consultancy SWECO Denmark serving as the consultant for the consortium. The challenges. As mentioned earlier, the project dates back to 2008, when Germany and Denmark signed a treaty to build the tunnel. It then took over a decade for the necessary legislation to be passed by both countries and for geotechnical and environmental impact studies to be carried out. While the process completed smoothly on the Danish side, in Germany, a number of organizations, including ferry companies, environmental groups, and local municipalities appealed against the approval of the project over claims of unfair competition or environmental and noise concerns. In November 2020, a federal court in Germany dismissed the complaints. The ruling came with a set of conditions, which we kind of expected and we were prepared for, on how we monitor the environment while we are constructing, on things like noise and sediment spill. I believe that we really need to make sure that the impact on the environment is as little as possible. A statement from the Judicial Department read, That aside, the Famarn Belt Strait is an important habitat for several endangered species, including porpoises and sea eagles. The construction of the tunnel could have a significant impact on these species and their habitats, which has led to concerns among environmental groups and regulators. And with the fight against global warming peaking in recent times, one of the key concerns surrounding the Famarn Belt Link project is its carbon footprint. While the exact carbon cost remains uncertain, an environmental impact assessment from 2013 estimated that the project's construction could emit the equivalent of 2 million tons of CO2. However, the actual carbon reduction benefit will emerge over the tunnel's 120-year life cycle. The tunnel's lower carbon concrete and high-speed electrified railway are designed to reduce the need for flights and shorten road journeys, effectively cutting down emissions. This shift towards sustainable transportation aligns with the European Commission's environmental objectives and aims to make the tunnel more ecologically friendly in the long run. But the hard part still lies ahead. The advantages. As part of the Trans-European Transport Network, TEN-T, the Famarn Belt Link will support the shift to sustainable transport by making it more competitive from European and regional perspectives. The tunnel will enable both freight and commuter traffic to use the shortest, fastest route, reducing CO2 emissions, freeing up capacity on roads and railways, and moving freight from lorries to more environmentally friendly electric trains. Additionally, the tunnel's two-lane dual highway and dual railway will cut road and rail users' journey time by about an hour each way compared to the current ferry crossing. The Famarnbelt Tunnel will also be unimpeded by poor weather, ensuring a more reliable crossing. 
Alongside the advantages of improved access to sustainable travel, the project is being constructed with great consideration for the environment and biodiversity. The reconstruction of stone reefs and the addition of stone protection for the tunnel will create additional habitats for marine plant and animal life, while green corridors will be created to support insects, flora, and fauna such as amphibians and orchids. All in all, the project is set to revolutionize Europe's transport corridor, and we will be here to witness all of that. If you enjoyed watching this video, then be sure to subscribe to our channel for more of such amazing content. Give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.